Tidytype.com presents... Welcome to part two of Tektite's top 10 biggest game disasters. Remember the ground rules. This isn't a list of the worst games as much as the biggest epic fails in game history. Where the bigger the hype leads to the bigger crash and burn. I'm Steve for Tektite's biggest game disasters, part two. Number five. Back in 1997, John Romero wanted to follow up such game classics as Doom and Quake with a brand new series called Dai Katana. Thanks to Romero's prior hits, this was a very anticipated game. Even Time Magazine itself would promote the game in a John Romero interview, insisting that, and I quote, everything John Romero touches turns to gore and gold. Was this an accurate comment? Well, let's put it this way. Dai Katana would not see store shelves for three more years. And man, would it suck. So, what was Dai Katana really like? Well, it played like Quake 1, looked like Quake 2, and was released just a short while after Quake 3. Does that make any sense? Well, neither did the game. In what other game can you see your character explode after being attacked by a mosquito? So bad was this game, even Time Magazine would publish a drastically different review of the game upon release, calling Daikatana remarkably bad, adding that John Romero has created a game so bad that nobody will ever expect anything of him again. Ouch! It didn't help that this game was hyped for three years, with some of the most arrogant magazine ads in video game history. When first announced, Daikatana was supposed to be the next Doom. In the end, it became one of the biggest game flops. Number four. Drop Atari Pac-Man into your Atari video computer system and you're playing the hottest games in Space Invaders, Atari Pac-Man. To look at the original TV commercial, you would think Pac-Man on the Atari 2600 was exactly like the arcade game, or at least playable. Yet not only was this a bad game, it was arguably the second biggest failure in the history of that game system. Just look at it. It didn't look like Pac-Man. It didn't sound like Pac-Man. It didn't help that every game began with the most annoying four beeps in video game history. The good news is that Pac-Man was such a popular arcade game at the time, this game did sell 7 million copies. The bad news, Atari had 12 million cartridges made. When looking at the final video game, it's amazing they sold as many as they did. Number 3 Imagine, Nintendo has just made a 3D game system. Who will star in the first game? Mario! The ideas of a 3D Mario game sound endless. Super Mario, 3D! Donkey Kong, 3D! Mario RPG, 3D! Wrong. The first Virtual Boy game would be Mario's... Tennis. Tennis? It was hard enough for Nintendo to sell the Virtual Boy, with its red graphics and a design flaw that forced gamers to stop playing due to headaches. Then they promote this new game system with... Tennis? Suffice to say, a tennis game did not sell the Virtual Boy, which barely lasted half a year on store shelves in the US, making Mario's Tennis one of the biggest game disasters in Mario games, sports games, and Nintendo itself. Number two. Back in 1993, few gamers could avoid all the hype for the 3DO game system. When everyone asked what was so special about this new system, one game was always mentioned. Jurassic Park Interactive, the game that would sell the system. To be fair, this was a pretty good sales gimmick. Jurassic Park had just been in theaters, 
And for another thing, a game where you get to fight dinosaurs sounds pretty cool. Seriously, how could even the 3DO game system make a dinosaur game boring? Security systems. Select tracking location. Select destination. Um, suffice to say, they did. Adding to this game's boredom were load times so bad, the game actually froze as it loaded a simple photo of your character dying. <laughs> Have you ever played a game so bad that the game actually forced you to wait as it loaded a game over screen? <laughs> Before its release, Jurassic Park Interactive was supposed this to be the jewel in 3DO's crown. After its release, it became the first nail in 3DO's coffin. Okay, let's have a quick rundown before we get to number 1. Number 10, Sword Quest. Number 9, Sonic on the 360. Number 8, Advent Rising. Number 7, Enter the Matrix. Number 6, Grabbed by the Ghoulies. Number 5, Die Katana. Number 4, Pac-Man, Atari 2600. Number 3, Mario's Tennis? And number 2, Jurassic Park Interactive. It's number 1. Hello? Somebody out there? E.T. Video Game? When it comes to video games, there are two types of disaster lists. The ones that dramatically put some other game at number one, and the lists that are right. Forget how dated and boring this game looks today. Even 25 years ago, E.T. the Extraterrestrial on the Atari 2600 was the worst game of the entire 1980s. Oh no, we're not just talking about Atari, we're talking about every Atari system, the ColecoVision, the Intellivision, the Vectrex, the Commodore, the ColecoVision Atom, everything. It was so bad, there's simply no way this game's awfulness can be summarized in two minutes. So let's make a quick checklist. The pits you fall into. The glitch that makes you fall into the pit over and over, often leading to E.T.'s death before he's escaped his first hole. Then there's the villain that keeps taking your inventory, causing you to start the game from the beginning. Villain number two is even more annoying, seemingly kidnapping E.T. to his house for no other reason than to make the game more irritating. A common urban myth claims that Atari had so many returned copies of this disaster, they buried them in the desert, with some rumors claiming that they poured cement onto the games to make sure they were really gone. If only escape from this disaster was so simple. Some analysts even predict that E.T. was the first cause of the video game crash of 1984, making E.T. the biggest disaster in video game history.